Hi folks, uh, today I'm proud to demonstrate uh, and introduce you to a B&K 1479B. It's a 30 megahertz oscilloscope dual trace with a bunch of features. Uh, the dual traces can be displayed either singly, like here's channel A, channel B. They can be displayed together or they can be added or subtracted from one another. We have uh, adjustment of I, we can put the input in on channel 1 either as an AC signal a DC signal or we can ground it out uh, just to show us what the zero line would be. Uh, we have working position controls The signal can uh, can be varied from um, five millivolts uh, per division <coughs> maximums uh, to well, that's minimum. Excuse me, five millivolts per division minimum to a maximum of five volts per division, and it does that in ten steps on both the A channel and B channel. Um, the scope is not very noisy. For its age, we've cleaned up the switch a little bit, and uh, we have a nice, <coughs> nice response for either A or B channels. Uh, there is uh, triggering available. We have um, automatic triggering where we can lock in on the signal, and then if we're not locked, you'll see it varying. Or we can go into the normal mode where you can display the locked or you don't get anything. We have horizontal sweep that goes from 0.5 seconds per division to uh, a minimum of 0.2 microseconds per division and it does that in 20 steps. And then finally there's an XY capability. There is a times five magnification capable uh, on the horizontal. We have a um, uh, we can change the slope of the triggering from positive to negative. Just reverses the the waveform. We have intensity. Plenty of CRT uh, brightness. We can take it from a minimum of zero, normal viewing, up to a maximum brightness. Along with that, we have focus control. I'll take this back down to normal viewing and adjust the focus once more. Okay. And uh, then there's a number of other uh, more exotic. Uh, uh, capabilities. We have uh, video mode uh, where we can observe, actually modulate the, uh, the video. There's normal, there's a fixed mode where um, you actually can <clears throat> trigger off of the center of a waveform and not off of the leading edges. And uh, we have low frequency rejection, high frequency rejection, and DC capability. And uh, we have external triggering that we can go off of, or they have an AM detector triggering where you can put in the uh, AM detection uh, uh, waveform and it will, it will trigger off of the um, uh, modulated wave. So, uh, what we want to do now is to uh, run this thing through some of its paces and um, well, let's take a good look at the, at the cabinet where I read it here. It's in, it's in pretty good shape. A um, little bit of a rub mar in this area. We have a, uh, a, a little scratch at this point or nick. The side looks pretty good. Same here, both sides. Pretty good shape. Uh, we have a, uh, a slight scratch on the front panel here. It's not bad, but it looks like somebody uh, rubbed it with 
something slightly metallic and that's unfortunate but all in all it's in very good shape very clean and uh, reacts very well <clears throat> okay what I've done here is I've connected both probes to the calibration test point which provides a 0.5 volt peak to peak 1000 Hertz signal square wave signal from which you would then uh, adjust the probes uh, for their um, capacitance all right let's uh, I just moved it to the times the probes to the time tens position which would be normal in this case and we would adjust then the probes so that the um, right, right now I'm, I'm adjusting channel 2 and you can see I've just I've it over adjusted this would be under adjusting and you go for the squarest waveform you can get that looks pretty good let's go to channel A and we do the same thing. We shift hands here so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm adjusting the, the probe for channel A. It's under adjusted, over adjusted, and then it's perfect square. And just for fun, let's see how both of these channels are tracking to one another. We'll move channel A down to channel B. And the fact is, when they're laid over top of one another, you can't hardly tell that, uh, that there's two channels there. They blend that well. Okay, point made, and let's move on.